Hi there guys, how is everyone? Uh, this is Andrew here. Um, in the last tutorial I showed you how to create a ship um, on a space background. Now, there's, there's not much functionality to this because you can't actually do anything at the moment. You can't, you can't make the ship move or you can't control anything. So we're going to change that slightly. Um, I'm going to First of all, what I want to do is actually um, create a new object. Now, we're just going to go up here and type spaceship, Oops, spaceship equals function, very similar to the last one we did. So it's just going to basically load some parameters in uh, when we create the object. Um, it's going to take these uh, parameters as arguments. Now, we're going to want to put x again as usual. If I can type properly, this y equals y, this width equals width um, and also we're going to put the velocity as we did for the last one in this one I'm also going to include velocity on the y axis so the y now now we've created this object um, we we when we want to start the game, we're going to create basically these parameters. I should explain are going to uh, control how um, are just going to be directly related to the ship image. So when we create this object here, we're actually creating um, the x, y width, height, and velocity of the uh, ship um, the ship character. So. All I need to do is now that I've created the now that I've created a constructor. I want to construct the object, so I'm going to go down into the start function, start game function. Um, I'm going to create an ins, um, I'm going to create an object, so it's going to be red ship equals new spaceship. So that's how easy it is to create an object. It's uh, but one thing I've actually forgotten. Um, you have to put some parameters in here. So obviously we can set the uh, uh, x, y width, height, and velocity in here. So I'm going to put 100 as before. So but basically it's going to mirror what we've got down in this one. So. 100 across, 100 down, um, 60 in width, I'm actually going to do 50 in height this time, and for velocity we're going to keep, uh, velocity on the x and y axis we're going to keep to zero, so that's good. Now, now when I go down to the animate function, um, when we draw the image we're actually, rather than writing the parameters directly into the draw function we're going to reference the red ship object so we're going to put red ship dot x red ship dot, dot y red ship dot width and red ship dot height now if I save this hopefully yeah, we get pretty much the same thing, except the uh, slightly smaller in height. So that essentially does pretty much the same thing, but it just gives us more control. So by having having an object uh, to create all the parameters for the ship, uh, makes it a lot easier to kind of um, change it when we want to, rather than just um, rather than just putting the parameters directly into the draw function. Now, now that's done. We kind of we kind of want some functionality. We want to try and create some movement on here or some kind of control. So what I'm going to do 
for now is I'm going to make it so that when we click on the canvas the ship will go up and when we release the mouse button the ship image will fall down uh, so so essentially when objects will come on screen um, in our later tutorials we'll be able to click uh, well they're going to be asteroids actually which is a bit obvious um, what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to avoid them so by clicking we're going to be able to avoid the asteroids and then and then by releasing we're going to be able to go down and avoid asteroids that way as well so we're going to create a variable called click down click down so this is going to hold a boolean value it's either going to be true or false either the um, mouse button is going to be clicked down or it isn't so it's either going to be true or false value in there now we now need to provide the functionality for what happens when the canvas is actually clicked on so to do this we can reference the canvas with a bit of jQuery and we're going to say when the mouse button is down kickstart this function here and we're going to say when the mouse is down um, click down equals true and here again we're going to put reference canvas again we're going to put mouse up function So if the mouse is released, click down equals false. Now, now this, so this basically, when we click on the canvas, it will set um, this variable to true. Uh, if the click down, if if the mouse is up, so if the uh, actual button's released that will be set to false so now that we've done this we need to basically provide the logic so that when the buttons click down the ship will go up and when it's released the ship will go down so to do this we firstly actually I'm going to do something I wanted to do earlier which was I'm going to take this out of the shapes loop I'm not 100% sure why I put it in there, but I'm going to just put it outside of the shapes loop. It's still going to do the same thing. It's uh, it's just going to be out of the shapes loop here, which is uh, it's probably best that it's put here anyway. So now we need to reference the red ship, and we are going to say red ship dot y plus equals red ship dot velocity y this is basically going to say any changes to the velocity y will be reflected um, which actually change the actual y position of the ship so um, basically it's going to it's basically going to tell the ship to go up or down now one last thing we need to do is so now we need to say if click down is true then red ship dot velocity y equals minus one so when the mouse button is clicked down it's going to be minus one which means the ship's going to go up else oh, Mr. Brace there else red ship dot velocity y equals one so there we have it 
so this provides uh, this provides logic so um, if a, if the uh, click down variable is either true or false it will move the ship up uh, which is minus one would mean the ship would go up uh, towards the top of the screen and a plus one means it will go down so let's take a quick look to see if this actually works no something's wrong so let's go back and look at our code yeah so I found out what it was it was something pretty simple um, I literally just missed a bracket here uh, to close uh, to close these parentheses I hardly say that word and also I missed a parentheses there and a semicolon so if I save that and refresh there we go so the keys released at the moment so if I click down the image goes up now if I release the button it goes down you can also speed this up a little bit if we wanted to so if I say when I click down we got three and if I release it goes down five let's see what happens when I do that it should be as you see he falls a lot quicker <laughs> so obviously you can play around with those parameters change it around a little bit um, so to summarize we created another object um, which is going to be used to create the uh, parameters uh, for the ship uh, movement and positioning we also created a click down variable which holds a boolean value so true or false and by setting um, an event listener we told it so that when you click on the canvas um, the click down variable will be true if you don't click on the canvas then it's false so and dependent on if that's true or false um, in the animate function when the click down uh, variable is true the ship will go up um, if the value in click down is false then it will go down we also made it so that the velocity would update the y parameter the y axis so when the image is being drawn the um, the y the, the y parameter is updated to i hope i hope that wasn't too complicated i've almost confused myself but hopefully you'll understand that um, it should all become clear um, it is important that the if statements are actually within the animate function so they need to they need to be there each time so that on each iteration it's gonna it's gonna add it's gonna add um, these values to y um, so I hope that was fairly smooth um, if not I apologize <laughs> um, and I hope to see you in the next video okay see you later